have done different kinds of jobs in different kinds of companies. I will just uh, briefly tell you a little bit about my journey so far and how did this startup of 40,000 actually happen. Do uh, you think you'd be interested in knowing about that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good to know so many people encouraging me. <laughs> okay. So this goes back to my school days. Um, until the fifth standard, things were going great, and uh, I used to, you know, I was second or third. I used to do good in my studies. Uh, from the sixth standard, I started uh, kind of going bad and I started failing. This had a huge impact on me because somehow, I mean, my school decided that all the children who were actually failing will be put in one different section. And uh, it was a big psychological impact on me. Suddenly I'm out of my regular friend group and I'm actually in a section which is labeled as failures, right? So it was strange. But then um, they thought maybe this will improve my uh, concentration and help me get better grades. It didn't work. I went from bad to worse. And until the eighth standard, they thought of uh, you know having me around. When I reached the eighth standard, those board exams were the most difficult ones. I failed in math, science, and social. And they decided to part ways with me. They said, please get lost. I said, okay. I don't have an option. <laughs> so I left my school and I joined another school which said that it's okay, even if you fail, we'll, we'll have you on board and we'll help you complete your studies. And my first brush with business happened when I was in the eighth standard. Uh, we had some financial problems in the family and uh, I wanted to support the family somehow. And I felt that it was so cool that, you know, I can actually buy something at a lesser price and then sell it for a profit. And that was kind of fascinating to me as a kid. But again, there was this big, uh, you know, uh, big problem of this failure tag on me, which was there. But I thought, okay, let's try this out. And I started uh, identifying what can I do to sell and what can I sell in the first place. So I decided, I did some research. I found out that a cousin of mine, far off, one who, uh, sells uh, sauce and uh, canned fruits and those kind of things and I checked with him and he said okay this is the price list I went to a bakery near my house and I said uh, you know I'll be wanting to, I, I want to sell this to you are you ready to buy it the first reaction was are you kidding with me because I was eight, in my eighth standard that time uh, but I said uh, you know I'll deliver it on time and I'll give you a good price better than what you're getting right now and uh, that bakery gave me a chance and I started giving out stuff to them. And slowly it went on and I added more and more customers at that stage. A few years later, I kind of left that and I felt that, okay, you know, the regular thing is to do a job. And I decided to join. So I actually in between even quit my studies after 10th uh, because I wanted to join a big college where I can, you know, be amongst the good you know, I better have not bullied at least. So, it took me one year to put my feet together and then I finally joined the college uh, one, after one year. And um, that's when, a little later, I started working also. My first job, my first proper job was uh, at a clothing store called Zodiac. I used to, I was a sales assistant, so my job was to actually, you know, clean the rack and put the shirts together after the customers see them. I did that for some time and then I had this urge of actually working in a good corporate company and I was waiting to turn 18 so that I can give an interview there and join that place. Um, G Capital was hiring that time and they were in fad and I thought that I have to join this place somehow and um, I gave an interview and I joined that place. The problem however was I could not work and study, I, can't, I couldn't do both the things at the same time because there is a big problem called attendance, I hope you guys are aware. <laughs> so, so I went to my principal and I said, I want to work, I cannot attend college. Another first reaction was, uh, are you kidding me? I said, no, I'm serious. He wanted to see my offer letter. So I decided to show him the offer letter, then he finally agreed and he believed me. 
and I started working. So that was my first corporate job. And all this thing, everything was cool for me, you know, whatever is here in tea hub sort of a thing. Um, and But it was a night job, it was a night shift. And uh, I had again this issue that, you know, I'm not really doing a regular job like other people, the 9 to 5 job. What do I do about this? So I looked for a switch after a year or so and I joined a company called HSBC. And there it was a day job and things were great. Two days off in a week. Uh, normal shift. I got to sleep at night. And everything was going fine. And I worked with them for over three years in different roles. From corporate communications to process training to a lot of other things. It went on for some time and uh, I got bored. Uh, now I wanted to understand what do I do, which will some, you know, what should I do because this is becoming a little monotonous for me and every day I'm doing the same thing again and again. I'm working on some accounts. Someone who's failed in math, science and social when he was in his eighth standard is working on accounts. It was again strange, but I, had, I ended up doing that. Then uh, I left uh, HSBC Bank and I joined a couple of other corporate companies. And finally, I, so I think that will be around five years odd of overall time that I spent with different corporate companies. And after that, I decided to call it quits without a job in hand. I left my house and I started living with a few friends of mine and uh, waiting for the right job. Uh, I, I was really uh, fascinated with this whole thing that, you know, uh, anybody who could write well really impressed me. And I had this problem, I, I could not write well, I had a lot of issues. So I, I wanted to write and for that I left everything and I was sitting at home waiting for the right job. And one day I read, it, read an ad in uh, a newspaper called Deccan Chronicle that they're hiring sub-editors. Now I had done my uh, journalism. So I thought that would be a good route for me to take and I joined Deccan Chronicle. I went to Deccan Chronicle's office, I gave an interview, I was kind of decent, I got a call after a week, they said we are ready to hire you. And I was thinking that I would be getting a good package because uh, my last one salary was pretty decent. And uh, I was used to, you know, getting that kind of a salary. But I went there and they said that we will give you 7,000 rupees a month which was one-sixth of what I was actually drawing previously. And they said they will not consider any experience of mine, I'll have to join them like a trainee. I immediately said yes. I came back and all friends and family and everyone said that you're a big fool, you had a good job, you were getting, it was a well-paid job with a good company, you left all of that to join, to become a journalist and started writing and start writing and that all of this for 7,000 rupees and all your experience is gone for a toss. I said it's okay but you know let's let's try. So I tried and uh, so I tried and uh, I thought they'll allow me to write but the moment I went for the job on the very first day they said that uh, so I used to not read uh, you know uh, the national papers, all the political news and all the serious news. I used to read only the news which was fun and entertainment. And I thought that they will let me write those fun and entertaining stories and I'll also learn so it will be a good thing. Uh, so the very first day I went there and they said that you know what you have to do is you actually have to put uh, local and national political stories together. I was shocked. I was like I mean, what do I do because I left everything and I came here thinking that they'll allow me to write and all that for an entertainment sort of a, a page but suddenly they're asking me to put together some boring stories which I'm least interested in and I left everything for this and I didn't know what to do but I still took it up because I didn't have an option I could not go back and tell my friends and family that you know I'm leaving this also because they actually celebrated that and when I was at home, I was at home for seven months doing nothing. I was just spending all the money I'd saved. That was the only thing I was doing and very effectively. By the time I joined G Capital, I had zero rupees with me. So I could not go back and tell these people who had some trust in me that I want to leave this job again. So I decided to continue with it. Uh, but 
again there was this thing to write and after three months I decided to write an article. The problem however was I didn't know what do I write about because I was not really good at any uh, particular subject. Uh, the only thing I was uh, really curious about was technology and I really wanted to, you know, new phones, new gadgets, those things interested me. And I thought that that would be a good thing to write about, so I wrote a technology review of some uh, of a phone. I decided to send it to the owner of the company straight, saying that I've written an article, can you please let me know if this can get published. I didn't know that that was not the usual procedure of doing things correctly, especially in a, a newspaper company. But uh, they were good enough, they replied saying that we'll send it to our Delhi office and we'll see if the article is good enough or the review is good enough. They sent it, the Delhi office came back with a good response and for the first time they said, okay, we're ready to go ahead with you know, publishing your story. And I was really excited and I felt, wow, whether I write good or bad, I don't know, but today at least most of Hyderabad is reading whatever I've written. So it's interesting and I want to continue doing this and I decided to continue doing whatever I was doing, which was writing. I used to do all of this after office hours. Uh, in newspapers, office hours are after 1 a.m., right? So from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. I used to write my articles and the rest of the time I used to spend doing uh, the usual uh, political stories, right? So then I left Deccan Chronicle uh, over a year and a half later. I called up a friend of mine and I said, see, I'm writing, I've written a lot of articles now, so I think I'm a good writer. Uh, and uh, she said that, uh, you know, we have an opening in our company for a copywriter. It's advertising, it's cool, it's young, it's interesting. So why don't you, you know, come and give an interview? And you'll be paid well as well because you have some good experience in Deccan Chronicle and other places. I said, okay, let me try. I went there and they offered me great salary. They said, you know, Saturdays is half day and Sunday is an off and you'll be working in a regular shift. Because when I first went to the newspaper office, it was a culture shock. Because you keep working seven or uh, six days a week. The only off you get is on a Thursday when everybody else in the world is working. Right? So I didn't know what to do. So I thought this is an interesting job. Let me take this up. I left Tekken Chronicle and I joined this advertising agency as a copywriter. The first month, they didn't release salaries for anyone. I was like, what's happening? I didn't really understand what was the issue. The same thing happened in the second month as well and third month as well. So three consecutive, three consecutive months and I don't get salary. After leaving so many things in my life, I came back, came to this so-called advertising agency where I have not been paid for three months and I don't know what to do now. But we were doing decent business. We were doing decently well and I didn't know why they were not paying us. But that triggered something that triggered the thought of starting a business. I told to myself that if we do not, uh, if these guys are not paying us, I might as well try and do it on my own. And I started working on this idea of starting my own advertising agency with, again, zero rupees. But how do I do it? Uh, I was, you know, in a different world. I didn't know that funds are so very important. So I was right in the back end working on a name, on a logo and all the creative things which, which can be done easily, right? And uh, when I was halfway through, I decided to, you know, talk to a friend of mine who actually got me a job in that company, who's uh, my business partner and friend Harini here. And I told her that, you know what, I'm planning to start an advertising agency. Do you want to be a part of it? And my uh, condition was, or the condition applied or the hidden uh, message there was that, uh, we might remain unpaid for the next five to six months. Think about that and only then answer. So she said, okay, let's try it. Now there were two people who were trying to set up a company without a single rupee. And we, th we, we felt, what do we do next? So the next thing was to get some money. We could not approach the banks because they said, give, a, give your pay slips. Now, what do I give them pay slips? Because last three months I have not got any salaries. How will I give them the pay, pay slips and get some funds from them? I could not even apply for a personal loan. So I finally decided to talk to a friend of mine who said, uh, the maximum I can do for you is I can give you 40,000 rupees, but you have to leave your passport with me. 
But I've known this person for a while, but he said, yeah, that's how it is. And he got me to sign some 25, 30 documents for that 40,000. <laughs> and he took my passport and he kept it. He was not happy just with my passport. He said, even Harini has to give my passport. So he took both the passports and kept it with him. And now, uh, I thought, what do I do? We need a place to work, right? So I asked another friend. I said, uh, you know, can you help us with some place because you have this small apartment that I'm aware of, which you have not rented, nobody is using it. Give it to me, give it to me for two, three months. We'll try it. If it's not working out, we'll, you know, move ahead. Uh, we'll not waste your time. And if it is working, I'll start giving you rent. And he said, Raji, what is it? Don't worry. Right? I hope everyone understands Hindi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, wow, man. This is what, you know, everything is working for me and this is awesome. We got some money also and a friend is saying that, you know, he's ready to give his apartment. That was big enough space for us. Now we needed the first employee for the company because I could not be possibly doing everything. So I decided that, you know, let us do some good to the society and let us help people who were in the same company where I was working and who had not gotten their salaries for the last three months. So I approached my ex-colleague that can you join my company or to be company as a graphic designer. He said, uh, he looked at me because he knew I had zero rupees. So he was, he obviously didn't trust me. But then uh, we somehow managed to convince him. Uh, and to do that, I had to tell him that we'll give you 20% more money than what you were not drawing in your previous company. <laughs> So his salary was around 23,000 rupees. So I was calculating that 40,000 is what I have, right? And even if we don't make any money in the first month, uh, we can manage and give this guy his salary at least. Harini and I have anyway decided that, you know, for the next six months we'll remain unpaid. So all this was good. And now was the time to meet our first client. I had not taken a client meeting until then in my life ever. The only one that I took was when I was going to those bakeries to sell some sauce. Uh, that was the only meeting I'd taken in school uniform. So this was the first meeting that I was going to take in casual clothes. And I went to a very big restaurant chain. We managed to get the number and all of that on the corporate manager and he called us for a meeting. We managed to convince him without actually having anything in the back end that we are a good company, you know, we can support you, we can help you, we know what we're doing, you know our shit and stuff. He said, okay, uh, I think it's interesting. Uh, let me do something. I'll So uh, let me fix the meeting or I'd rather uh, introduce you to the owner and he will take a call whether he wants to give you business or not. But the only thing, so Harini and I, both of us went there to talk and uh, the corporate manager said, only one of you can come and meet the owner and Rajiv, you come. I had not taken a single meeting until then. Right, so I didn't know what to do. That was the longest walk of my life from one cabin to the other, which was exactly three steps. I was thinking, what will I tell this guy? How will I sell stuff to him? And how will I convince him that we're good? And he must have been dealing with so many people. So in the first few seconds, he'll find out that I'm lying. We are not really good, we don't know what we're doing and we're just trying and all we have is, you know, this 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 passion towards advertising because it really interested me and it still does. So I went in straight and I told him openly that, you know what, we don't really have anything in hand right now. Uh, we are in the process of setting up the company, uh, but we need business from you. If you can support us, I promise that we will deliver something beyond your expectations. And I decided inside that, you know, I'll, I'll work hard, I'll stay up in the night, and I'll burn the midnight oil, and, you know, we'll give him some really cool ideas. So he replied saying that I'll give you one chance. And if I like your concepts, if I like the way you've approached things, we will have you on board, and you can expect regular business from us. 
I thought this is the most amazing thing that could happen to me and uh, that was the happiest day of my life also because first business, everything was kind of falling in place. I could see some money also coming in. I could also see that the employment joined me will be paid next month. So those kind of things were working out. But the big tension here was, how do we create a campaign which will excite this person? So we obviously started working on it. But during this phase, you remember that friend of mine, right, who gave his apartment to me? Yeah, so he got back to me saying, Are yaar, mom bol rahe, three months ka advance or one month ka current month dene ka hai Or rent aapka 8,000 hai. I said, are you kidding me? And I abused him. Uh, right, so because everything was set and I had my 40,000 rupees intact with me. And this guy comes and suddenly says that, you know, you have to pay me. So I was calculating that most of my money is gone here. Then how will I pay in 8 fours and 32 <laughs> So how will I pay in 32,000? And that was the biggest shock. And it almost came near that biggest happy day of my life. So I didn't know what to do. And I, and I after abusing him for, for a very long time, I told him that, uh, dude, you know, you're being unfair. You should have told me earlier, I would have taken look for a smaller place or I would have taken only one room in your bloody house, you know. But uh, he was like, nah, yeah, you'll have to pay and stuff. So we decided to part ways with that 32,000 rupees and gave him that money. So now we were left with 8,000 and it was the very first month. And we were working on the campaign in the back end. And obviously the system and all, we, another friend of mine, decided to help us. He gave his credit card and he said, monthly EMI time pe bhar dena. Agar oi bhi ballot bounce hua EMI, I will come to your office and take the bloody system out. So I said, okay, I will try doing that. So all this was happening. And uh, we did our first campaign. It went well. And uh, they were really happy with the campaign and they splashed it all across the city. Wherever I would go out, I would see holdings of the work that we had done. And uh, I straight told them that, you know, we don't have a lot of money with us in the back end, so I expect you to release all the, all the payments within three days from the time you receive the invoice. So they were good enough to say okay to that. Uh, I didn't really give them an option, actually. So, so that's how we started this advertising agency, which we named What's in a Name. That was the name, that is the name of the company. And that is where we started our journey from five and a half years back. And it is being, it's, it's on as of now also and it's doing good and I'm really happy about it. And we have a good team now. And we have now not just one but 22 more people who are working with us on that same month, in that same brand. <laughs> so then, uh, then uh, I thought, you know, people are asking us, you know, you guys do good advertising and all, why don't you start doing some videos? And I was like, I've never directed a video or written for a video, what do we do? But uh, it was incoming business, you know, I could not really say no. And we said, yeah, 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 we are very good at it. And, don't worry, we'll manage and all that. And uh, we took up some video projects, we hired a team, we got people together. I started writing, learning, reading about videos and started directing them as well. And it went fine and in 2012 we decided to launch a production house called Namesake. Okay, time is up. Two minutes. Okay. He's given only two minutes now, but I'll fast forward this. So Namesake we launched in 2012 and in 2013, I, f I felt that we've been playing in our comfort zone. We decided to launch a salon in 2013 called Just Not. And in 2015, I said, you know, why not document this entire thing and all the learnings and failures and perceptions and perspectives and all the can and whatnot in a book. I finally decided to launch a book called STF, you start the F up. That's how the journey has been so far. I am, I think, I'm done with my time. I've taken more time than yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you guys.
and all the best to each one of you. I can tell you that your next few hours over here is equal to the walk that I've taken, the three-step walk, which was the longest walk of my life, but it was the most important and the best walk of my life. So all the best. Thank you.